Welcome back to Football Daily. This is how Jurgen Klopp transformed Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp has turned Liverpool from a side struggling to shake the demons of their failed 2013-14 title challenge to one of the best teams in world football. The enigmatic German is the fastest Reds manager to reach 100 victories and is tantalisingly close to sealing their first league title in 30 years. After just four seasons, Klopp is on the brink of legendary status on Merseyside. But how has he made Liverpool a European powerhouse once again at a time when football has never been so competitive at the top? This is everything you need to know, the series where we give you the story behind some of football's defining moments. Brendan Rodgers may have come agonisingly close to winning the league at Anfield, but by the end of the 2014-15 season, his team had totally lost their way. Star forward Luis Suarez had been sold and without his goals Liverpool's deficiencies were brutally exposed. The new attack of Divock Origi, Ricky Lambert and Mario Balotelli were desperately underwhelming, while Rodgers endlessly tinkered with the team's formation to fit in the 10 new signings made from the Suarez sale. Dumped out of the Champions League by FC Basel, they ultimately stuttered to sixth in the league and Rodgers was eventually fired after a one-all draw with Everton on October the 4th, 2015, after his side gave up a 1-0 lead for the fifth time in six games. The team had forgotten how to win. In came Jurgen Klopp, who immediately introduced his Gagan Press footballing philosophy. Although his first game ended in a 0-0 draw away to Tottenham, it was clear his message was already getting across. They ran five kilometres more than in any other game that season. This new energy got Liverpool to the Europa League final, where they lost 3-1 to Sevilla, though they could only finish 8th in the league. However, Klopp's infectious personality, as well as his sparkling CV from his days at Dortmund, won him time and freedom to implement his methods and assess his squad. Year on year they improved, while the club's dealings in the transfer market helped him forge a team exactly in his image. Klopp has been superb at adapting to changes in his squad. When Felipe Coutinho left in January 2018, instead of replacing him, he reverted the formation to 4-3-3, with the midfielders assuming more defensive responsibility and the attack being left to the now formidable front three of Mane, Firmino and Salah. And when that proved to be not enough, he evolved the team again. His fullbacks in Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andrew Robertson became central to forward play, adding more threat in the final third with devastating effect. Klopp has also revolutionised his own approach. The Gagan press was often guilty of causing burnouts within his teams. Now, rather than rapidly pressing throughout the game, Liverpool have become much smarter and efficient at setting traps on the field, using active defending to steer their opponents to areas of their advantage where they can counter-attack. This routine is well rehearsed, while a settled squad has allowed automatic procedures to kick in mid-game helping the team execute their style at the highest tempo, even against the toughest of opponents. Meticulous pre-match preparation, including a tailored game plan for each opposing team, has given the players the belief they can beat anyone they face. Nothing is left to chance, and Klopp even employs a special throw-in coach to make the best of every situation. Liverpool have unshakable self-belief under the German, who has earned the total adoration of his players. He makes a point of never calling out individuals publicly, while his success has cultivated an invaluable winning mentality. The squad he inherited lacked direction and confidence, but now have almost forgotten what it feels like to lose. One of the key factors behind Liverpool's transformation is how successful Klopp has been in the transfer market. Of the 18 players that travelled to his first game at Tottenham, only four remain. In fact, in four years, 28 players have left with only 19 arriving and faith put in academy products. Klopp has achieved all of this with a net spend of just over £100 million, hugely impressive considering the trio of Alisson, Van Dijk and Fabinho cost just short of £200 million collectively. But success in the market isn't purely down to luck. Klopp's excellent relationship with the owners FSG and in particular sporting director Michael Edwards is at the heart of their newfound positive results. The two work together when approving transfers, and while this may sound simple, it wasn't always that way. By the time of his firing, Brendan Rodgers' relationship with Edwards had turned sour, with both vying for control over acquisitions which led to mistakes. 
For example, in the summer of 2015, Rogers wanted to bring in Christian Benteke, while Edwards wanted Roberto Firmino, resulting in both players arriving at considerable cost. Now, however, it is a different story, as Klopp is not a manager to spend for the sake of spending. So, when Liverpool banked the huge £130 million fee for Felipe Coutinho, the pair knew exactly who to target, rather than squander the riches as happened after the Suarez sale. When the decision was made to sign a new centre-back, it was Virgil van Dijk or no one else. His calculated approach has been so successful that only four of his 19 arrivals have been moved on since creating a stabilised and tactically astute squad. Talent alone, however, isn't enough to justify a move for a player. The personality and previous behaviour of any new target and their entourage is closely considered. Klopp wants his team to be a harmonious unit on and off the field, and he avoids outrageous personalities who can be disruptive. A perfect example of this was Nabil Fakir. In the summer of 2018, the Reds were heavily linked with the Frenchman for a fee of around £60 million, and the Lyon forward even took a medical as the deadline loomed. However, the player's brother reportedly got involved, demanding more money and negotiating new terms. Klopp had seen enough, pulling the plug on the move. Regardless of Fakir's undoubted talent, it ultimately wasn't worth the risk. The days of Liverpool buying the Mario Balotelli's of this world are well and truly gone, with the board and owners all united behind Klopp's prosperous vision. Anfield is no longer just a historic venue, but a fortress once again, with Klopp making it one of the hardest places to visit in world football. Napoli, Borussia Dortmund and Barcelona have all fallen victim to the stadium's roar on a European night since his arrival. In fact, prior to defeat by Atletico Madrid in March 2020, they were yet to lose a home knockout tie under the German. But it is in the Premier League Liverpool have been particularly impressive, having remained undefeated at home for over three years. They have won 107 of 168 games at Anfield and are yet to even drop a point there this season. It's where Klopp's players perform best, averaging three goals a game, while Mo Salah has registered 46 goals and 15 assists in just 50 home appearances. Using techniques cultivated during his time at the Westfalenstadion as Dortmund manager, Klopp has weaponised Anfield by creating a brilliant connection with the fans. He regularly challenges the supporters to be vocal, complains when seats are empty, and hypes up the importance of home power. Ever since a home game against West Bromwich Albion in February 2017, his players link arms and salute the crowd after the match, in a style typically seen within German football. These gestures have elevated the Anfield army's sense of self-worth, which translates to the players on the pitch. FSG have also recognised the stadium's ability to gain an edge. Rather than build a new home elsewhere, they have followed a policy of enlarging Anfield where possible. This has helped maintain a historic link between the fans and the ground, preserving its famous energy and preventing possible fallouts as seen in West Ham's move to the Olympic Stadium and Arsenal's to the Emirates. There are few managers in world football who can forge a relationship with the fans quite like Jurgen Klopp. Anyone who doubts the concept of the 12th man should look no further than a match day on Merseyside. Klopp's electric football, infectious personality and careful recruitment has transformed Liverpool into a title-winning machine. On top of this, he has provided the psychological belief his team can't be beaten. 11 members of the squad have never tasted a league defeat at home, while Klopp reportedly has banned players from touching the iconic This Is Anfield sign unless they have won a trophy for the club. To play for him at Anfield, you have to be worthy, and on the eve of securing a historic Premier League title, his approach has more than paid off. We hope you enjoyed the latest edition of Everything You Need To Know. As always, let us know your ideas for any future episodes in the comments below, and if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe to Football Daily.